Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. He's a very funny comedian, and if he's playing at a club near you, I would go see him. Hello, if Larry. There are any clubs left? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> come see me before I croak. It, uh, it, well, what they used to say is, coming to a theater near you. Well, how do they know where I live? <laughs> That was a chemi- a theater near you. A theater near you. Yeah, all right. How do you know it's at a theater near me? You know, do you have my address? <laughs> yeah. So, so hello, Larry. That sounds that'd be a good name for a sitcom. Sure would. <laughs> if you want to fail at having a sitcom, how long did I say- how long did that one last? How long did Hello Larry last? It was a, it was McLean Stevenson who quit Mash to go yes. do Hello Larry and Hello Larry. I think it was I think it was 1978. Yeah. How many episodes? You know? I don't think I, th- I don't think I don't he think, lasted a year. I don't think he lasted 13. It was such a bomb. And then you never heard of McLean Stevenson again, right? Yeah, left the uh, highest rated program. For, <laughs> a, might, might be a bad decision. I don't know. I think if you talk about bad, all-time bad decisions by people in show business, that's probably it. Okay, That would be one. Who was the, that? Wasn't it Shelley Long that left Cheers? Yes, she left Cheers. That's another bad one. Who else left something? I'm trying to think of people who left stuff and were never heard from again. You know? I mean, also, if you have a big hit sitcom, okay, chances are pretty good that you're never going to work again. Uh, I mean, you take a look at, well, Seinfeld people, about half of them, okay, Seinfeld, which was the most successful comedy probably of all time. I I think I can say that without any fear of anybody arguing that fact. Mm -hmm. But it was that good. I was that big. Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus went on to a couple of series that she did pretty well on. Okay, so she had a career. Did what's his name? Michael? Uh, what? What's his name? Who played Kramer? Did he have a career? No. 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 He just got in trouble and then really ditched his career. All that right. really killed it, and then. Uh, uh, Jason Alexander really hasn't done anything. He hasn't done think. much of anything either. So, you know, you can be in the most successful sitcom in history, and those people were making a th- million dollars an episode, okay? Uh, and uh, after it was all over, they kept getting a million dollars an episode for the first couple of, of uh, shows of the series, and then it, it goes down exponentially. But you still, to this day... I'm sure the checks they're getting, they could live very nicely on. Yeah. But, you know, but they're not, they're really not working. And Jerry, Jerry was the smartest one. You know, he could have signed with another network or with the same network to do another series and got an incredible amount of money and then failed horribly. Rather than do that. Yeah, they wanted it. They offered that to him and he turned it down. Rather than do that, he said no. Uh uh-uh, I'll do things my way. So he went out, and he did a couple of things extremely successful. Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee is tremendously successful. Um, and um, he also is now, he produced a movie called Frosted. I mean, he's doing little projects here and there, but he's never going back to full-time TV. And that was a very smart move, because everything he's done has been fairly successful. But the other two, Jason Alexander and Michael, uh, uh, I can't try to remember his last name now. Richards. 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 Yeah, just zero, zilch. You know, so 
Are they just too typecast from doing that show to do anything else? Uh, I, you know what it is? It's not typecasting so much as you had a phenomenal, you were part of a phenomenal success. And they expect great things out of you. And then when you don't do great things, you know, you, you have to live up to that level of, of success. And you can't. Who can live up to being part of Seinfeld? Could you? No. You know, uh, I would just take the money and run, live off the residuals, uh, s spend the money wisely. If I'm going to do other projects, make sure they're projects that don't remind people of the same thing. You know? So, anyway. Last time we were talking, the question of God came up. And I asked you if you believed in God, and your answer was? A blasphemous no. A blasphemous no. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I'm one of these people that I, I absolutely agree with you. There probably is no God. But if people say, well, what if you die, and it turns out there is a God? And I said, then if he's the God as reported, he will forgive me. Right? Yeah. I, I don't believe uh, God has a terrible ego, although the Bible would make you think otherwise, because he was always getting even with people. Well, let's just scare people and keep them in line. So. But so do you, do you perceive in anything after death at all? I don't think I think it's just nothingness. But what yeah, but how do you survive in nothingness? You can't conceive of nothingness because all that you've ever known is somethingness, I guess we'll call it. But like yeah, I think we mentioned this before, but it'll be like before you were born. Well, my father said that to me. It's like before you were born and I you know, I don't know what it was like before I was born. I guess it wasn't anything. Yeah. It's but, hard to envision, but it makes sense. Well, you don't remember much of your birth, do you? You don't remember being born. I don't remember any of that. No. Nobody remembers being born because it's probably the most uh, uh, vile, horrible thing that happens to you. Yeah. You know, every baby comes into this world crying. Like, it was nicer back there. <laughs> you know? What are yeah. you doing to me? You took me from a nice, warm womb where I was sleeping all the time and enjoying myself and in a kind of reverie, and now all of a sudden you yank me out of that into this cold, horrible world. Yeah. Nobody comes out of the womb going, wow, this looks like a cool place. Oh, boy, thank God that womb is over with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it, certainly the womb is a very uh, secure place, you know. And uh, and you can kick a little, and she, your mother, will enjoy that, you know, things like that. But then you get born, you get brought into this world, and as somebody once said, I never asked to be brought into this world. I wanted to stay there. So I don't know, you know, I don't even remember. You don't remember. I think what's the furthest back you can remember? I can remember probably to about maybe three years old. Really? Certainly four. Do you remember anything significant that happened at those ages to you? I remember we had a when I was three we had a pet dog that bit my arm, so I ah, remember Ah, you see, now what I decided was the stuff we remember from those days is not the good stuff. No, no. But the horrible stuff. Right. Okay. Uh and um I remember my first memory was maybe at four when I almost drowned in the Russian River. Jesus, I really? fell in, and they had to they had to like you know pump my chest and do all of that or whatever you do. Really? Wow, I never heard that one. Yeah, and and I remember my whole face feeling like it had bubbles all over it, and I it, see, but I remember that incident because it was traumatic, and I think you have a tendency to remember those times when things were traumatic because beside yeah. that traumatic thing of your dog biting you do you then remember everything that went after that no no you still just remember the dog biting you yeah so i think what we remember of our youth when we go back and we say tell me what what you remember from your youth it's all traumatic shit 
So, how wonderful is life? Okay, you know, traumatic shit yeah, is what uh, we. Yeah, pretty brutal, really. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, and I, I guess, gee, do I remember when I was five? I mean, it's hard to remember back then. You know, I can start remembering stuff. I think after five, I remember getting a TV set in the house and moving to Marin County and having a dog named Kipper. And I remember all that stuff. Uh, that happened about when I was about nine years old. But outside of that, I don't remember. I don't remember. I Quite frankly, I don't remember yesterday. Okay, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, as you get older, the uh, short-term memory definitely goes. So. The short-term, but, uh, well, I don't know if the long-term goes. Uh, I'm having trouble remembering names now, you know. Uh, terrible thing, you know. Everybody who's in a movie is that guy who was in that thing. Right. Yeah, um, names are really tough for me too. But and you're a guy with a good memory. Yeah, but I've never been good with names. So your memory is selective. Yeah. And your memory, for instance, his memory goes back to. In case you never heard me with Larry before, his memory goes back to dates when things happen. Yeah. And you can remember a lot of dates when things happen. You probably remember the first day you were on my show in San Francisco, right? I do. I can tell you it was, uh, it was, I'm pretty sure it was January 14th, 1983. It was a Friday. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. First time on my show then. 1983. I, How many years ago was that? 41 years ago. 41? Yeah. Oh, 83. Yeah, 41 years. We've known each other 41 years. Do you realize right, that? Right, yeah. How many people do you know that you've known for that long? You know? A lot of comics. Well, apparently by the time you got to me, quite a few. Yeah, a lot of comics. Yeah. And but then I didn't do your show again till August of 83. <laughs> and it was the day, it was a Monday. I remember this. And How did I treat day, you? How did I treat you? Was I nice to you? You were nice to me, but I just, I was so intent, like the first time I was on your show, I barely said anything, and uh, you, and I said, that was terrible, I said, don't worry, he said, don't worry, I'll have you back, and you did. Yeah. yeah. And then I was on, uh, so I came back in August, and it was the day after, some guy named Aquino had been, a, went back to the Philippines and was assassinated as soon as he got off the plane. Yeah. So. That was on a Sunday, so on the Monday I was on your show, and you, I remember you were talking about that guy and how, how obvious it would look that uh, the president of the Philippines had this guy killed. That, that must be a good joke you could have there, like, you know, what's the, uh, what, what's the hardest thing about being the president of the, of the Philippines? Getting off the airplane? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's not... Not the long flight that kills you; it's the departure. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, but that's God. so long ago, God. That is long ago. I mean, I think of all the things that went on in that time, and you know, I I can't believe when I look back on it that and I'm 84 now, so I've I've lived a fairly long life. I'm now living on borrowed time, as it is said. That uh, that it was uh, uh, quite a you know uh, what was what were we talking about? I just <laughs> lost the thread. Um, yeah, the time has gone. So that's it, half your life ago when I met you. Yeah, yeah, it's half my life ago. But you, but you start to remember things and going, God, did I go through that? You know, some I, the other day I was thinking about, uh, gee, well, how lucky have I been in this business? You know. Uh, how how uh, I I assume I assume in my life I didn't do that well in radio, but then when I look back at it, I go actually I did, you know. And then yeah, I, just by your longevity, you were a success. Well, I'm just thinking about all the times that I was uh, out of work, and then all of a sudden something came along, you know. Well, is that luck, or is that the fact that I had achieved a certain status that allowed me to get more work? 
you know. So, I mean, I was looking at my career and going, you know, I could I could cry about it, say I didn't amount to anything or whatever. But, no, I had a very, I think, a very good career, you know. Uh, and so, a great career. So at this point, I really don't resent it at all. Uh, and I don't necessarily feel I have to relive it or live on that past. But, it's, you know, it was, a, it was a pretty good. Okay, you know. So I'm not, I'm not. I'm not bitter. Oh, maybe a tad. No, I think you've had a very positive life. Yeah, and and you've had a. I think you've had a successful career. I mean, you're not no, you're not a main headliner, and you're not uh, the level of a Seinfeld or a a Brett Butler. Uh, remember Brett Butler? Uh, she, I knew her. She was. Uh, she actually was huge for a couple of years. Yeah. Where is she now? Uh, I don't know. You know the advantage to what's happened in your career? You were never huge. Yeah. <laughs> right? But you are. were always working. And that's important. That's what it's all about. Brett Butler isn't working anymore. Okay? Larry Bubbles Brown is. And compared to B Brett Butler's career, she had a successful career. But it only lasted for a couple of years. You Number know? one sitcom. Your career has kept going. You know, you're still out there plugging out the jokes, going to plugging the away. Netflix comedy festivals, uh, opening up for uh, Dana Carvey and who? Who's the? Felipe uh, Esparza, Rob Schneider. Yeah. So I mean, you're you know you're 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 a great opening act for some of the. The big comics, you know. Yeah. And how are they? How successful are they? They have to hire you to open for them. So, <laughs> you know. so I mean, you you've had a very, I think, a very successful career. But do you perceive your career as successful? I I think it was successful in the fact that I want I wanted to make my living doing comedy, so I did. But yeah, so I guess that's success, right? Yeah. Was there any time you always, want, you always want more, but I never wanted to be uh, hugely successful. I never wanted. I, all the comics I started out with wanted to be the next Robin Williams. I go, God, why would you want that? Yeah. I mean, um, it, 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 they want to be, wanted to be another Robin Williams, and now what are they doing? They're selling uh, used cars somewhere. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Meanwhile, ships, but, meanwhile uh, you didn't want that, and you're still working. Yeah, if you become Robin Williams, suddenly you've got zillions of people depending on you. So you've got pressure to, it's just, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. No. I mean, I, I know people are laughing right now going, oh, these two guys are complaining that it's not good to be successful like Robin Williams. Well, look what it did to Robin. You yeah, know? you have to be a certain type of personality to if you get that type of fame it takes it's not easy to live with and you can't go out in public much and right your whole life is just uh, changes completely yeah. you know and and uh you, you like your life the way it is you know yeah never been married never been married so you, you anonymous, must be, you mu anonymous you, life you must be gay then i guess huh i must be gay is that <laughs> Ninety years old. I quite haven't found the right one yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the fact is, you've never been married. I've been married four times. I guess to prove to everybody I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. You know. <laughs> because you got to admit that when you hear somebody is a is a, what they call the confirmed bachelor, mm -hmm. you wonder whether they're gay or not. Yeah, it was always, it certainly in days past, I think they... Who's a comedian who hasn't been married? We were talking about a couple. I, uh, Bill Maher's never been married. Bill Maher, yeah. Never been married. He's not gay. You know. No, he's... Uh, but he doesn't look like he'd be exactly a fun person to live with. No, no, no. Uh, y you know, you probably would be okay to live with. You know? But yeah, I just like to be alone a lot, so I would. Uh, well, my would friend Shecky was that way. My friend Shecky never got married. He wasn't gay either. 
you know. Mm-hmm. He, if he was gay, I I would have probably been the closest person to being his lover, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, he wasn't gay, and he never got married. And one of the reasons he never got married was probably the same reason you haven't gotten married. He liked being alone. Yeah. He, he liked not having somebody there that they have to constantly pay attention to. You know? Yeah, that drives me crazy. You know, um, I mean, we live in a big apartment, so Marjorie and I don't get on each other's nerves. If we get on each other's nerves at all, she's in the bedroom and I'm in the guest room. That's it. Don't have to see each other all day. Dude, that's a great situation you've got. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, with a guy like you, I mean, you want your, you, I don't think you would know how to live with somebody at this point. Uh, no, you get so set in your ways, I, I would, it would be impossible. I mean, is there a kind of woman that could come into your life right now and you'd say, come on, move in with me, I think we could get along. What would it take for that woman to exist? <laughs> I don't think it does exist. Really? Oh, okay. No. All right. You know. I had a girl. Really don't. I I had a girlfriend once that uh, she got mad at me once because I cheated on her. Well, I cheated on her more than once, but I well actually we we broke up so often I didn't know when I was cheating and when I wasn't <laughs> cheating. So yeah. But anyway, uh, and she said to me, "Why do you feel compelled to go and have sex with other women?" And I said, "Darling, I want you to know something. You're everything to me, except one thing." And she said, what? I said, somebody else. <laughs> but it was true. I mean, in a lot of ways, I, I enjoyed women that, uh, you know, I like the one-night stand. I thought it was a terrific idea, a great concept. It is, yeah. You know? uh, but uh, you have a tendency sometimes, I mean, how, how have I married four times? Well, first time she was pregnant. And then she had a miscarriage on her wedding night. <laughs> oh, my luck. Wow. My luck. Okay, so that, that, that goes for that. Okay. Then the second one was, uh, was Ronnie. I married her because... I married her primarily because we moved to Houston, Texas together. And then, you know, she wanted to get married, and uh, I didn't want to hurt her feelings. Is that a good reason to marry somebody? Wow. <laughs> I didn't want to hurt her feelings and say no. Really? Huh? Yeah. Third time was Susan. We were both broke. And Susan suggested, why don't we get married? Then people will give us a present. And then we'll tell them we all just want cash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's why we got married. And I married Marjorie because, quite frankly, one day we were living with each other finally. And, and she said, uh, you know, on, on a... Uh, leap year, leap day. You know, on a leap day, women have the ability to ask a man to marry them. So, uh, to propose. So she proposed to me on, on leap day, and I looked at her, and my, my romantic answer, I remember it forever, and it was a very romantic answer. I said, sure, why not? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and we got married. And, you know, this has been my uh, my most successful marriage. There's no question about it. But it's also at our age a marriage of, well, where the hell are you going to go if you're not here? You know, so so we we get along fine, you know, or as fine yeah, as two people. Yeah, you seem people. very happy. Well, as fine as two people can get along, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I um, uh, you know, I, I love her and I... Uh, and we, we, we have a good relationship. And as I say, we live in an apartment where if we don't want to see each other for a couple of days, we don't have to. You know, maybe we'll bump into each other in the kitchen. Yeah. So That's that, an amazing apartment. Yeah, amazing apartment. But uh, do you, are you ever going to get out here to New York? No, that would mean getting on an airplane, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't. And the way... <laughs> the way Boeing's going now, I don't want to get on a plane. <laughs> Well, you never wanted to anyway, right? I never liked flying, no. So, it's, so that maybe hurt your career a little bit, didn't it? I should have traveled more, yeah. I mean, you were not a road, uh, a road hog. You know? No, I did. Uh, I, I know some guys are on the road 40 weeks a year. 
Oh, uh, Slayton used to be a, a road warrior, as they call him. He probably did 40, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Just amazing. Well, you know, all I'm saying is I'm happy with my career, and you should be happy with yours, because where we wound up was pretty, was okay, you know? Yeah, I... I yeah, something. it's a very uh, show business, whatever you do in it, is not there. There's no... Uh, not a lot of uh, safety net. <laughs> well, I gave people a lot of, uh, uh, you know, radio listening uh, that was memorable for them, and that they yeah. will remember the rest of their lives. And that that really is an accomplishment in my in my book. That's why I did it in the first place. Well, yeah. People ask me about you all the time. Yeah. Uh, nobody asks me about me all the time, but that's okay. <laughs> Hey, listen, time to go. Can we see you in another week or so? We, we will, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Larry Bubbles Brown has been on with us. I don't know how long now. I have to go back and look, but I think it's over 200 episodes. That's incredible. Yes. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And Larry Brown once again with us, and he will be with us again next week. Uh, like a bad penny, he keeps turning up. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. In case you're just tuning in, you don't understand who I am. I used to be a big shot. Just thought I'd mention that. And uh, uh, we have some a couple of people waiting to come on here. Last couple of nights have been pretty good, actually. Uh, and uh, who knows, tonight might be that way, too. Let me just uh, go here, and you can see people popping up. Uh, here comes uh, Alan, and there's Charlie Wallace, uh, and he's connecting to his audio. At least he's working on it. Um, let me see here. How are you all doing this evening? Good. Yeah, yeah. Alan, good, good, good. Yeah, Alan uh, is doing okay, and uh, Charlie's doing all right. Okay, now let's let's so we don't all feel so stupid. What does your yeah. shirt say? Oh, my! Yeah, it says, "May the force be with you." <sighs> May the force. Well, M. Yeah, that's, that's the formula for force: mass times acceleration. This force. Oh, I see. Okay. <clears throat> It could mean, may the fart be with you. <laughs> that you takes would, force. That takes force. You would take a moment of educational value and turn it into crap, wouldn't yep. you? <laughs> hey, 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 pooping. Oh, pooping's funny. That's funny. Yeah, joke. Yeah. Either that or sexual. I didn't say it pooping. I said a fart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, how y'all doing? Anybody yeah, been uh, terrific? What? Terrific. Terrific? Yeah. Boy, you're always, see. Here's a guy, all right? He's a six million dollar man. I mean, he's got more hardware in his chest than uh, <laughs> than I do in my studio. Okay. I, I, <laughs> and yet, you ask you how you're doing? You're doing great. You're doing terrific. You know. Hanging out. Every day. I get to see my granddaughter mm -hmm. hit a three, what do you call it, Ben? Triple. She hit a triple. Ah, really? In baseball. Softball. Mm -hmm. Softball. You know, softball. Oh, in softball. She's a great, great athlete. Really? Yeah, both my daughters played softball. Yeah, it was great. It's kind of fun. Well, isn't that what your, your people play uh uh, uh, Charlie is is yeah uh, yeah softball. I played for forty five years. Well, I fired for the last thirty eight years. So. I thought it was a girls' game. <laughs> well, <laughs> girls do play it because it right. is a, a softer version of baseball. You know, it's not an easier version, but it's no. a softer version. <laughs> uh, In high school, I played baseball. Yeah, I mean, if you get hit with it. If you get down. hit with a softball, does it hurt much? Yeah. Oh, okay. that's a misnomer calling it a softball. It's not as hard as a baseball, but it ain't soft. 
<laughs> yeah, but it's a big ball, and it's thrown underhand. It's a bigger ball. It's thrown underhand. Yeah. The pitch, you know, we do slow pitch. So, of course, the girls do fast pitch. That's right. I could not hit. When I, my daughter was in high school, I could not hit one of her pitches to save my life. <laughs> they would just whip that ball. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, okay. So, I just, you know. But slow pitch, I could handle. <laughs> Just I wonder if she got a dollar from her teammates if she hit her dad with the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, but uh, she'd probably do it for free. Well, anyway, so uh, we're we're not having a lot of people here. We have a nice crowd here, but this is not early, huh? It's early. It's early. Yeah, we How got long... spoiled with Josh the last two days. What? Well, he says he's working this weekend, so he's got to get up with the crack Josh, yeah, Josh uh, won't be here tonight, and I usually do a thing with he and uh, and Kevin on uh, on yeah. Saturday nights, and uh, he's not going to be able to do it tomorrow night. So, you know, uh, but uh, otherwise, is, gonna... there, is there any real news to talk about? Um. Doesn't really seem like it. What is it, a pause in Trump's trial or something? There's been no news about it this week. No, there hasn't been a pause. Today, um, uh, what's her name? I'm trying to remember her name now. Um, that Hope Cassidy. Hicks. Hope Hicks. Hope Hicks, yeah. Okay. Yeah, was but testifying. I heard news about what she said. Yeah, and she said that she didn't feel that, uh, that uh, uh, Stormy Daniels and the other woman were telling the truth. How would she know? Yeah, how would she know? Was she there? Well, no, she wasn't. But she was <laughs> She was in the office noticing everything going on. Yeah. And she just said she didn't think it was, you know. Yeah, he just paid her $130,000. He just paid her $130,000 because it was, he, he's a nice guy. She's not a very credible And witness. the other woman, uh, whose name I can't remember now. The Playboy uh, Bunny, yeah. yeah uh, Playboy she, he Bunny. paid her 150000 Yeah. No. Hmm. Now, you don't give money to women like that for nothing, you know. So, how would you take it if some women gave you $60,000 or whatever? Would you take the money? If some woman gave me $60,000? And you, and you weren't at. Listen, you know, I just had a guy leave me more than that, you know. So yeah. I can't. And you didn't have to have sex with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and he and he didn't talk about it either. No, you know I feel guilty about that in a way because, you know, it's very nice that in my old age I've been handed a decent sum of money to take care of me. for forty five years or something. So don't. Yeah, don't but feel bad. but the thing I feel guilty about is I rather I rather I weren't getting it and he was alive. <clears throat> oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, you don't have that choice. I don't have that choice. You know. And, and once it was gone and I found out this, I, I, I felt, hey, that's very nice of him, you know. Uh, if he knew how happy he made Marjorie and I in our declining years yeah. uh, with a guy who didn't do much to save a lot of money. I mean, I had enough. I, we could have lived okay for the rest of our lives. But, you know, I mean, we Especially were drawing in. Especially paying into, $600 a month rent. Yeah, especially. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. It's 500 Oh, okay. Sorry, I got it wrong. If you're going to get my rent, get it right. It's going to go up next year, $100. So I just wanted to let you know. No, it won't. No? No, the no. most it'll go up is uh, about another 25 bucks. Really? Yeah. Oh, what a great deal. Stay there. Well, I don't, I'm not planning on going. Do you see me leaving? No. You know, I mean, I'm afraid to go away on vacation. I'll come back and they put a block on the door or something. Uh, yeah. no. Don't let any squatters get in your place. Jeez. It, well, what do you mean? We are squatters. <laughs> you know? well, I was reading a story about the, the squatter in New York that just, this woman was away waiting to retire or something. She had this haunt house. And some squatter moved in, and when she went to re retire or to visit the house to show, so she could see how it was going, there was somebody living there, and they acted like it was their house, her house. And 
she had to go through this long drawn out court procedure to get the person evicted. Wow. Wow. Well, or go to a gang infested neighborhood and hire somebody for $5,000. Yeah. 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 But uh, we're 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 trying to look at what we're going to do in in the in the case of vacationing, nice. uh, at where we're going to go, and so far, a Viking cruise up the Danube because we've seen it in TV ads seems to be, be look good to us. You know, it's not going to be that taxing or anything like that. And it looks like it's supposed to be a very beautiful uh, boat ride. So. In all seriousness, a friend of mine is close to your age, and he goes on cruises all the time, him and his wife, and they look for boats. They go through a travel agency that have features like uh, handrails and stuff like that in the shower and the bathroom and stuff like that because he knows so many friends that get on a boat that's made for people that are 40 or 50 and are a lot more agile and don't fall and you know things like that so it might be worth your while to i think uh, there for instance there are some if you go on a boat that doesn't take that many people like one of these flat boats that viking does i would imagine they have those amenities and i'll tell you why because i don't think a lot of younger people want to go on that probably you not know. uh but uh I'm, I'm sure they do have the hand rails and oh, the cruises like I went on had handrails and stuff in the shower, so yeah. even though I didn't need it, I need somebody to pick me up and take me from place to place. That's what I need. You know, I actually went out without a cane today, and I oh. felt felt very unstable. I felt like you know, I I just was worried about it because I'm so afraid of falling now. I got a cane after you talking about that. I went. I didn't even send it to him. Yeah. Uh, well, you sent me a very nice cane. You also sent Marjorie a very nice cane. I'm a good guy once in a while. No, you're a good guy quite very often. Nice. You know, wait a minute. He's going to go show us. This is the first time we've ever seen Charlie walk. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, Charlie walk, huh? I think that's the same color that Marjorie got. Is that brown? I love this. No, this is actually black. Oh, really? Oh, okay. It's adjustable, so I can adjust it to the, exactly the height that I need. Yeah. That same one. Yep. Bone pad, little thing. Yeah. And that's real comfortable holding on to it than, than one of those wooden canes. That Theirs are med by, made by Medline, I think. Yeah. I yeah, don't. I think that's <clears throat> yeah, they're good See quality. what we've come to, folks. See what this program has come to. <laughs> We're talking about canes. Okay. I got one, too. <laughs> if we, if you use it? I did when I tore my meniscus five or six years ago. Yeah. Well, I got this one. I fell that time. You, you sent it to me. And quite frankly, you know, it, I feel that it's very good because, uh, as I tell people, I don't really need a cane to get around. You know, both my feet are working. To, not like they used to, but they're both they're working. What I'm afraid of is falling. And so the reason I have the cane is because of the fear of falling. Sure. So. Well, last time my back went out around Christmas, I was uh, I really needed a cane. I wish I had it then. So I got yeah. it now. Should have got on the show and said, Alan, please send me a cane. <laughs> I'm sure you would have, too. I feel guilty about it. You sent me all this. So we went out to dinner tonight, and you'd say, oh, that's very nice. Yeah, but we went out to dinner two nights ago, and we went out to dinner on Monday. And I looked at Marjorie and I said, Marjorie, we're getting a little, you know. Do you know how much total we spent on those three meals? Hmm. About $450. Wow. And then cares. we went out to dinner with you guys, Jeff, and we split the bill. And that was another, you know, so I, I'm beginning to think, gee, you know, really, you can't even afford to eat out anymore. It was pretty expensive, like. Oh, yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah. Just ridiculous. Well, that's New York. Yeah. And well, they, the, the, the trouble is in New York, these, these restaurants uh, need to pay the lease, you know, yeah. and the lease isn't cheap anymore. In California, the, the uh, minimum wage went up to $20 a person. So all the fast food restaurants are jacking up their prices, 
You go to Taco Bell, a burrito and a taco that used to be two dollars is now eight dollars. No. Yes. Really? For that crap? Yep. Wow. You got to tell me quadruple the price because the minimum wage went up. I don't buy that. Yeah. Well, it's their reason, I guess. So. Well, a lot of the, a lot of these places are doing it because in, in New York, for instance, as a perfect example, what I just said. Uh, the rents are getting so terrible that they need to charge more. And I understand that. I don't hold that against them. No. But I think that some people are going out of the way to raise prices more than they need to because yeah. they can get away with it these days. And that is, you know, really the government should be on the lookout for people who gouge. Yep. yep. You know, and they're not. They ought to go after the gas companies first. Yeah. Gas companies, good example. Gasoline is six dollars a gallon here on the Bay Area. It's only going to get higher because it always goes up right before the election, or before summer here in yep. the Bay Area. So why why has it gone up that high in California? I thought it had gone down to like four dollars. Everybody blames Biden. He has nothing to do with it. Yeah, I don't know. Supply and demand. You know, you go. It, it's interesting in California. You know, everybody knows where you somebody is. It's sort of, kind of. So in Central California, so in Yosemite, gas is cheaper in Yosemite, but they've got to ship it in these tankers 200 mm -hmm. miles from the refinery or 300 miles through a mountainous road, dump it at the gas station, and gas is a dollar, dollar and a half cheaper in Yosemite than it is around the corner from where I live in the Bay Area. Makes no sense. Well, also, if you get away from the major highway into the town, it gets yeah. cheaper, too. You know, I, in, New, in San Francisco, the highest cost mm -hmm. for gas was on Lombard Street, which is a street that goes from San Francisco, from Van Ness and all the other places. You go down Lombard, and it leads to the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, people figure, I'm going over the Golden Gate Bridge. I don't want to run out of gas in the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> so they've got yeah. these gas stations. There are a couple of them there, and they're always the highest priced mm -hmm. in, 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 anywhere in the Bay Area. I don't understand some of these gas stations. There's in the south of the market near the Bay Bridge entrance, there are not one, not two, not three, but four shell stations with a, within a half a mile of each other, all on routes going to the Bay Bridge. Wow. Four of them, and they're not cheap. They're more expensive than here. Probably closer to $7 a gallon. Right. <clears throat> Oof. So, I mean, you know, it, that's, that's a problem. That's a real problem. It it's, it's gouging. It and, is. and you know, I mean, my see, my question is, you, you want to make a profit? Okay, fine. I I, I understand. I have that. no problem with that anywhere. How how much of a profit do you need to make? I think Shell just announced their biggest. Oh yeah, it was like ten billion dollars or something. Yeah, something like that in the, in the past quarter, their biggest ever. Really? Yeah. Yep. It was almost double what they had profit the same quarter last year. Right. Right. Something no like kidding. That, yeah. You should have some stock with them, right? Yeah, really. I wish I did, you know? Uh, I hadn't thought about it. But... You know, part of it is, is gas prices are going up everywhere because of electric cars. It's taking... Mm. You Actually, know, that'll make it go down because there'll be less demands for it. We have more well, less, de cars. less demand for gas usually means that gas prices go up, wouldn't it? No, not necessarily. No, I mean, they it, it, COVID because nobody was driving anywhere. If they want people to buy gas, then they want them to buy gas automobiles. And right. if they want them to buy gas automobiles, they don't raise the prices on gasoline. No. You know? No. Um, yes, Jeff. The, the best thing that we're doing is we have a car that has a hybrid in addition mm -hmm. to the regular thing. Well, that's what I would do. That increased the mileage tremendously. Yeah, I, I, that's what I would do. I think hybrids are the answer because the trouble with electric cars is I w there's a thing called uh, uh, electric uh, uh, angst or whatever about, you know, it, it, uh, how, how far can I go? I got to charge the yeah. car. And then if I got to charge the car, I can't just charge the car for as fast as it takes me to fill up a tank. Right. It's going to take me maybe an hour to charge yep. the car. Yep. So yep. you've got all those <clears throat> problems involved, whereas with the uh, what Jeff has, which is a hybrid, 
you got the electricity and you got the gas. And when the electricity mm -hmm. gets low, the gas part of the engine kicks in and then it charges the electric. I think that's, yeah. that's got to be the best idea, at least for the time being, until we have something where we can, like hydrogen, I think we could probably gas up pretty fast, you know, but we haven't got any of those mo modalities going. And that's a problem. There, there's only like yeah. three hydrogen stations, gas stations in the Bay Area. Yeah, wow. Really? One of them happens to be close to me. It's part of a Valero gas station. And I was talking to the owner and they said, it cost us, it, you know, it, with, a, with a special deal, it cost us $180,000. We had to take the car wash out that we were making money on. And there's only about 30 cars a day that come in that run on hydrogen. Why do you have to pull out the car wash? Well, because they have these big storage tanks there that they offload the hydrogen into. I don't know much about it, but they're big above ground storage tanks. If they get a leak, it's probably safer to just leak out into the air than the underground. Yeah. I, I don't know that much wow. about it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. But, but you everybody... see, you, electric cars, Teslas, especially in the Bay Area, I mean, Teslas here, now probably around Austin now that they're there, yeah. you see a lot of Teslas floating around everywhere yeah. you go. Oh, I'm Marin County, California. Every other car is a Tesla. Right. Well, in the, you know. Bay, in the whole Bay Area, but but I, I think wish some it, people are starting mean... to have second thoughts about Teslas and about electric cars because of the, you know, the problem with charging them just yes. takes too long. I mean, if you could charge these things in ten minutes, as an example, That'd be different. Yeah, it would be different. People would just go in, okay, I got 10 minutes. I stick the nozzle in the thing and sit here and wait for it to, you know, completely juice up. Uh, but you you can't, you, it would take you at least a half hour to juice up to a certain point. You know, even if you didn't want to fill it completely, you just wanted to have enough to get you home. Yep. And then at, home, no then at home, you gotta, you gotta have a, a thing and uh, you can get a fast charger yeah. which will do it in an hour or something like that. But my question is, how much is the electricity costing you to charge the car? Oh, it's a lot cheaper than the than the price of gas. It might no, be cheaper, cheaper than the price of gas, but it probably ain't cheap. No, I, no, I don't I mean, In California and probably in Austin too, you, you, you find these Tesla charging stations all over Ford, mm -hmm has is now got their all their cars and a few of their vans and trucks are all electric and they the, the switched over to the tesla charging uh, centers mm -hmm. so they don't have to put ford ones throughout the country in california it's pretty hard to you drive by you know it says you know it says gas station quarter mile up it says tesla supercharger which are the fast chargers yeah but how fast is that charger i have no idea i don't own a tesla so I've anybody anybody who has a Tesla, would you call us and tell us how fast those are? Yeah, Brian. Take the what are you doing, Brian? Call in. <laughs> yeah, Brian, Brian, you would know. Yeah. Um, also, um, oh, yeah, Farben Colossus says that it's called range anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. For um, me, it would be I'm looking for a new Ford van, and Ford makes an all-electric van. It gets about 110 miles per charge. Well, if I want to go to Los Angeles, that's 400 miles. So uh -huh. I, then I got to go to these supercharger places, mm -hmm. spend what, spend whatever, cheaper than gas. But I got to sit there for an hour while oh, it charges. Yeah. There are a couple of Teslas that get 300, 350 miles to the charge. Yeah, Tesla. Gets I think I saw one that's 500, isn't it? Probably. I may be yeah. wrong. Yeah, but not not the vans, though, for some reason. But mm. but that I could live with. Yep. You know, that I could live with. So could I. You know. Um, but still, you know, what you do is you pull into a place and you charge it. And while you're charging it, hopefully they've got a restaurant right there. And then you, eat and you can yep. go in and get some lunch and whatever. And before you know it, an hour's gone by and you got another 500 miles charged. Right. But if you went to LA, that's 500, that's 400 miles. So you'd be able to pull into somebody's house and plug it in or something like that. You yeah. know? Provided I'm, I'm they had a charger. Ford, I'm hoping Ford comes out with a car like Jeff's got a hybrid for their van. I think yeah. there are hybrid vans, aren't there? Not, not full size. 
Not the full size vans. Yeah, an SUV. Yeah, well, an SUV is not a van, though. No. Yeah, it's not a van. Well, that's yeah. kind of a kind of a van. It's not exactly. Well, you don't see them doing deliveries. But, uh, Prime doesn't do deliveries yeah. by the SUVs. They do them out of vans. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I and mean, as bad as I am, I need the van to hold me. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a car in fifteen years. Maybe more. How many? No, more than that. I haven't had a car in twenty you know years. Twenty years. You know how much I could save if I didn't have to have a car? <coughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean I, I've up. lived in New I lived in New York all that time, and to have a car here's 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 the um, the litany on that one. Uh, first of all, I would have to buy the car. <coughs> okay, so we figure what seventy thousand dollars for let's say a Tesla. Yeah. Or let's not even say a Tesla. The seventy thousand dollars for any decent car, okay? Sure. Then you've got to, of course, gas it up or juice it up, one or the other. Okay? But then you've got to have insurance, sure. which in New York is okay. ghastly because cars Wear get and stuck. tear, tires, oil you, changes. You, you, well no, that that you got into it and you've also got don't forget, I got to put it in a garage. I don't want this thing sitting out on the street. The garage will cost me about 500 a month. So when you're through between the insurance and the, even if you paid off the car, you're going to have to be paying out six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month yeah. on all the extras. And is that worth it when I'm not going to use the car except once in a blue moon? Okay. So I have no reason to have a car. You can go rent one. I will go rent one. Yeah. Right. right. Although That's I don't true. know if I know how to drive a car anymore. It's been 20 <laughs> years since I've... I think it's like a bicycle. Once you learn, you never forget. Well, that may be true, but, you know, I get a little drowsy. I'm a little more tired than I used to be. I don't think I have the same reflexes I once had. But you get a Tesla that drives itself. <laughs> well, that is a, the benefit of the Tesla now, isn't it? There's a couple car companies that are doing it. They're testing them in San Francisco. They're using them as taxi cabs. So I got into a cab to go to a different neighborhood with some friends, and there's no driver. No kidding. And it talks to you, and it says... Was that Tesla, or was that that other company? It was a Tesla, but, but there are a couple other cars you see driving around, doing the mapping and stopping. And I got to tell you, this car ran a red light, you know, <laughs> just like a regular cab, and came within inches of swiping the side of a police car that was double parked in the street. <laughs> and I said to my friend, we're taking a, a, a cab back that has a driver in it. This is crazy. Well, I mean, would, it, I'll tell you, thing. that would scare the crap out of me to be riding oh, in a car. I mean, I don't mind if the guy has it on automatic, but then right. he can, he's sitting there and if something goes wrong, he can override yep. it. But nobody in the front seat? I'm sorry, I, I can't do that. I'd be, I actually, I'd be white knuckling it all the way. I rode in the passenger's front seat, and it's weird because, you know, it it, it you know it, it it turns the turn signal on, you come to a stop, then you see the, the steering wheel turning, and I'm like, there's a fucking ghost in here or something. <laughs> this is so weird. You know, and then, then my friend says, we just blew through a red light. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. I want to get in the back seat. Can we? Can you stop? Stop the car. It wasn't listening. Well, there are some videos on uh, YouTube of using Tesla with automatic, you know, yep. control, mm -hmm. and it's going through San Francisco. So I know the streets they're going through. Oh yeah. They really stopped at every stop sign. I mean, it, this, it, this one had a malfunction. I mean. It should have, when they saw the police car, it was double parked, but the police can double park in California and everywhere. Yeah. But it should, you know, it, it should, it should see that. The police it, car. Th there was something like, I don't know, 28 different cameras on the on that car. Yeah. And on top of the police cars, these flashing lights that this thing just misses the car. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. No, that's I, We that's took a regular good. cab back. But I wouldn't mind having a Tesla for that reason, that I could put it on automatic, and if there's a problem, go to sleep. I, huh? Go yeah, to sleep. I wouldn't go to sleep. <laughs> no, I don't think I could go to sleep. I think I would be too. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, I love Teslas. I think they're a great little car. You know, if anything, they're kind of a cheap car. You know, they're not. 
they look kind of cheap, don't they? I don't think so. You know, I don't know. So. No, pretty pretty you know I, I mean, a cheap car is like a Prius, like these hybrid Priuses. Yeah. I, I, Jeff, I'm teasing. I know you guys have a Prius. Don't you? No, I have a CRV. What's that? Oh, a Honda. Honda. Yeah. Those are nice cars. Yeah. I was joking about the CRV. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of, uh, you, I mean, you see a lot of uh, uh, Priuses around here too, because a lot of the techie people like to have the the hybrid yeah. even before even before Tesla hit the ground out here. So yeah, hybrid's the way to go. I think. I mean. You, you were just saying that it, it saves you a fortune in gas. Pam's in the driver's seat and you're pushing. That helps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I I just, you know, I, I, I keep thinking about, well, I, I'd buy a car if I lived in the country. I'd have to buy a car. But I'm not living in the country. Oh. I'm living in the city and I don't plan to move out of here anytime soon because I'd be stupid to do it, you know? Although the next person that moves in here is going to have to pay the same rent. But they're not going to tell them. Oh, wow. You know. Mm. Oh, yeah, the, ju the judge sent the, set the rent at what it is. Um, oh. And it's supposed to be that way whether we're here or not. It has nothing to do with us. God, I'd hate to be the owner of this place. Yeah. You'd hate to be the owner of this place? Yeah. Uh, I'll bet places like yours are renting for seven, eight thousand dollars a month there in that building. Hold on, I'm having to blow my nose. Um, it's allergy season, folks. No. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the um, what did you say that you would do? Uh, uh, yeah, I would hate to be the owner of your unit. There are probably people in your building paying seven or eight thousand dollars. Oh, there are people paying seven and eight thousand dollars. Yes. Right. Yes. So that those owners are doing a lot better than the owner of your unit. Well, they're making more money off of those. But you know the thing is, they they they're what they're really lousy at. They have not maintained this building. Absolutely. I mean, this is a beautiful building. It and is. If you just it's did in New Jack City, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but if you did some real um, uh, fixing up of like the courtyard, for instance. Uh, they they pulled out all the dirt in the four sections of the courtyard. Yeah. They had to reseal the bottom so they didn't leak into the uh, garage, or not the garage really. It's <laughs> horse stalls, uh, but they, it was leaking. So they they put a you know some um, tarp in there and stuff to prevent that from happening. And then what they did after removing all the dirt, they replaced the dirt with the old dirt. Now, let me tell you this. That old dirt, I would say, is over 100 years old. Really? Okay? If they just replace it with nice, fresh dirt, how much, how much does dirt cost? You know? How much... I can't get fresh dirt. Isn't all the dirt all over the world billions of years old? Yes, but it it, it this had, wasn't uh, this this had bricks in it. That was good. Joke. You know, it's a mess. It's a mess. Yeah, but but you get dirt that's been filtered, that's been sit, okay. you know. So, so it doesn't have all the rocks. It's fresh dirt. Quick. Yeah, it doesn't have all the. This yeah. just threw back the stuff with all the the the, uh, the rocks in it and everything, and it's just horrible. It looks disgusting. You know. Uh, it's like it's like my my cousin that lives in Chicago. He lives near the lake. Used to say that he's going for a swim in million year old water. How do <laughs> you know, and people say hey, you got to be kidding? It rained two weeks ago. Well, mm. uh, it added a little bit of water, but some of that water in that lake is probably a million years old. Or yeah, older. probably not. I mean, let's see here. Wouldn't the water in a lake? Hello, Tony. Wouldn't water in a lake? Um, kind of uh, uh, evaporate and then get replaced by other water from rain? Yeah, well, that's, a, where, that's where rain comes from, is the evaporation off of either the ocean right, or Right, but the when it goes lake. up, it comes back. It's it's like it's been filtered. The right. dirt doesn't go up with it. Yeah, except for that lake is pretty deep, and so it, the, the evaporation yeah. is only on the surface. Yeah. On the surface. 
So there's a yeah, lot but I mean, of water. It's just, ter it's just terrible. They, they could have replaced it with new earth or not, as you say, uh, filtered earth. You're right. It, they, they didn't have to put all the rocks and twigs and stuff that were. Yeah, that it's it's, a, it's horrible. Looks like a, looks like if yeah. I showed it to you, it looks like a cesspool for crying out loud. <laughs> it's terrible. Now this is in an apartment house where they're not trying to rent out apartments at seven thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't convince me to do it at seven thousand dollars a month. The elevators are shabby. The uh, the uh, uh, hallways. You've been to my place, Jeff. Am I describing yeah. it correctly? Yeah. It, when you finally get to our apartment, everybody walks in and goes, "Wow." Yeah. But but prior to that, the place is so badly taken care of that you come up in a shabby elevator through a shabby lobby up into a shabby mm -hmm. lobby on our floor. I open up the door and you walk in, and there's the wow factor, right, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, you had a video yes. of, of your apartment. You, you took us <clears> on. A it was yeah. great. It was fantastic. And there are a lot of things I'd love to do to this apartment, uh, but I can't do it because, uh, not because they won't let me, but why should I fix their apartment? You know, I don't own it. Uh, it doesn't look like you're going to put it in a situation where people can buy it, you know, they have it go condo or go, uh, uh, what's the other term they use for it? Uh, Is that a co-op? A co-op, yeah. yeah. Or co-op. As, isn't any of those things if, if we had a you know if we were able to buy this and do a co-op deal on it uh yeah sure we'd start we'd redo the floors and do all the doors and make this place really spiffy but you know i'm not going to just do it and they still own the place you know so I, yeah. now, one of my apartments in in portland i got a call from the landlord today and somebody decided to rebuild his Harley Davidson motorcycle engine on the carpet in the middle of the room. Oh, God. oh really? <laughs> Wasn't that nice of him? You know, he's got a thousand dollar deposit, which of course we'll keep, and it's going to cost me another four thousand to replace the yeah, carpet. Yeah, you can't replace a carpet for a thousand. Did you throw him out of there? Yeah. Uh, the the yeah the the, the uh, property management company evicted him, but you know, after they evicted him, they went in to inspect the unit and see if it needs anything. And there's a there's a Harley Davidson engine sitting there in parts and grease all over the carpet. Wow! What, what are you going to say, Tony? It's just like your place. Remember, you know, when he sent the motorcycle in the apartment, I automatically thought of Fonzie with the with the motorcycle and in the apartment on top of the garage. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's funny. Right. That's 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 it's just, that's it's, crazy. It's, I mean, who does, how do you get it up the stairs? Is it an elevator? Yeah, there's an elevator, a good elevator. It works good. I, you know, I, I got stuck in an elevator at age six. Huh. And so I have a fear of elevators. I mean, you talk about your building having an old elevator. I would be in good shape because I'd be walking up and down the stairs every day, you know, or maybe not. I have a fear of elevators, too. When I was working, I always walked up and down the stairs to my yeah. desk. I don't have a fear of elevators, uh, but I, I, because I have my watch and I can call the super and say, hey, I got a problem here, you know, if I don't have my phone on me. If I have my phone on me, it's easy to take care of too. But uh, in this apartment house, you'd really get afraid because they look like they could break at any time. I, I don't care if it breaks as long as I'm not in it, you know, I'm just, I have a fear. <laughs> I have a fear it's going to stall between the yeah uh, hydraulic hydraulic elevators. They get up and they get to the floor and then they bypass it by an inch or two, and then they bump down little by little and it goes doop boop boop until it's even with the floor and the door opens. It's when the door's not opening quick enough when my anxiety goes through the roof. I think ah oh, shit I'm stuck in here. Okay, let me do something. I'm going to put myself on screen here. And let's admit somebody. Oh, we got a new person. Yeah, yeah, but they went away. They went no, away. Okay, they went away. Their Tesla needed to be charged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, hmm? I have a young kid, my son, and he lives in New York. He lives in Brooklyn, works in Manhattan, and he doesn't have a car. But he has I'll make him a deal on an apartment if he wants to change the carpeting. <laughs> <laughs> he said, 
Sorry, it's in Portland, Oregon. It's a bit of a well. That's not, yeah, that's, that's, not old. that's not that's not Brooklyn. Hard to get there, but he takes a, He has a bike, and really, he, he goes everywhere. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't get on a bike at my age. It <laughs> you no. Know. I don't know if I would either, but uh, if, at his age, it sounds like a great <laughs> idea. You know, I would maybe a tricycle. You know, a, a, an adult size bike tricycle. Bike. Where you can stop somewhere, you you know, you don't fall over or something like that. It's a dangerous thing if you think it about is. It. At our age, if you fall over, you yeah. can crack your hip yeah. or or worse, you can end up in the hospital. You can end up like you know like, I won't mention names. You can end up like somebody that we all know that, you know, uh, had some back surgery and he can't walk anymore and probably yeah. never be able to unfortunately. Who are you talking about? Jack Bishop. Patrick. Oh Jack yeah. Bishop. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. Oh. But Patrick's not older. I was thinking of, you know, oh, okay. folks, folks that Does are anybody already... have any word how Jack is doing? How's he doing? I didn't hear oh, He's having a birthday party. Yeah, when, when did he uh, say? Yeah. The middle of this month or something. Saturday the 18th, yeah. Huh. Right. Okay. So, I mean, you know, he's apparently able to get out of the house. Maybe he's having Maybe it at the something house. about having to go over there and put him in a wheelchair and and yeah, she did yeah. and stuff like that. It, it, she says he'll never he'll never walk again, not on his own. So, I mean that's got to be that's got to be a horrible feeling going yeah. for back surgery that was supposed to help you and you, you come out not able to walk. Hmm. Well, well uh, that's what happened uh, yeah. to uh, Patrick. Patrick, yeah, right. You know. And Patrick's much younger than Jack, yeah. so you know you can really. But I, I'd feel sorry for him. Only Patrick doesn't want anybody to feel sorry for him. Patrick right. has a great attitude. A great really does. Oh, he absolutely does. I have so much respect for him because the way he's handled it. Yeah, he's handled it perfectly. Actually, if I was younger, I'd probably. If I was in his condition, I'd probably drive out my wheelchair in front of a semi. Yeah. I don't know that I'd want to live my whole life that way. So no, anyway, like, you know, I mean, get, getting, like, getting getting old just sucks. You know? it does. <laughs> At 65, if I got in an accident and lost control of both my arms or my eyesight, I'd, I'd, I'd want to kill myself. I mean, you know, everybody says, oh, it's easy for you. you gotta yeah, but you it. couldn't find the gun, so, you know. But that would be part <laughs> sure. of it. And, and, trying to, yeah. and trying to work the combination on the yeah. safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's somewhere, the six is somewhere around. You know, well, I'd know. commit suicide right now, but I don't have the nerve. So. Well, you know, actually, actually, I, you know, the, I can't shoot myself because I don't have the nerve to do it. It makes well, sense. Well, you know, my ex-wife, Ronnie, um, literally killed herself. She, well, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, with, yeah. with, is a, a doctor-assisted suicide, which is better known as Kaiser, by the way. Uh, <laughs> But doctor-assisted suicide, that's a Bubbles joke. Uh, yeah. A doctor assist oh, by the way, Bubbles, if any of you have, I don't know if he's doing it. Well, he's doing it, but there's this thing called Netflix is a joke or something like that. And it's a festival in L.A. where they're having any number of comics get up and do their acts. And he's do he's been invited to do it. Nice. For 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, 10 minutes. And uh, it's this weekend. So I'm wondering if they're going to run everybody who is on this thing or just like they have Seinfeld and they have some other people, you know, who are famous. And if they're going to not maybe run some of the not so famous people. I would love I think to they see do that them. every year. So I, I remember watching a whole bunch of uh, net, uh, YouTube videos. But the well, there's this, uh, this uh, um, uh, Spanish or Latin comic by the name of uh, Esparza. I'm trying to remember his first name. Uh, uh, and uh, he uh, opens up for uh, for him uh, on the road. And mm -hmm. uh, so Esparza got him a shot in this uh, Netflix comedy festival. So he's going to be on it this weekend. I notice they, they, they're going live with the thing. Uh, they're going to do a Tom Brady roast, and they're going yeah, to the Tom Brady roast is Monday, I think. Huh? Yeah. I, mean, I just watched the Jerry Seinfeld the Unfrosted movie on. Oh, Netflix. that's very good, by the way. I liked it, Alex. I was going to tell you, but I just thought it was. I thought it was hilarious. I liked it. Yeah. Did you see Mar-a-Lago? Alex, is that true? Was that a joke? Yeah, that's absolutely Mar true. 
that Meriwether Post, who yeah. was the heir to the Post fortune, owned uh -huh. Mar-a-Lago. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, and she sold uh, it to. I think she sold it to Trump. Yeah. Oh wow! I think you're okay. right. That yeah. was Trump. Let me ask you that. Yeah. No, they. In fact, they said there. Uh, she, you know, she had Mar-a-Lago or own Mar-a-Lago, and then it says this is true. They put that up on the. Yeah, did say that. I wasn't sure. Everybody, everybody would think. Oh my God! Everybody would think it was a joke. Everybody would think it was a joke, but it's not yeah. a joke. I think the Post family uh, bought the property and had it built. Had Mar-a-Lago built. Yeah, yeah. It's their, it's yeah, their estate. Right. But anyway, um, uh, no, uh, fr fr defrosted. Uh, is it a defrosted or unfrosted? I think it's unfrosted. unfrosted. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I just watched it. Behind it it's a great it. little movie about the uh, about the creation of uh, pop tarts. Yeah. Now it has nothing to do with the truth. Okay, it's meant as a total comedy. Yeah, it was I mean, funny. We all know the snap, crackle, and pop do not <laughs> exist three in guys, real life. <laughs> you know, and uh, Tony the Tiger is played by Hugh Grant. Yeah, he's there. Who plays you see when Jerry goes, that's great. He plays that. the part of Thurl, Raven, Thurl Ravenscroft, who that? was the vo voice of Tony the Tiger. Oh, wow. Thurl Ravenscroft. That was actually the I guy's Google name. Him now, because I wasn't sure if he was real or not. He was real then. Yeah, no. He, yeah, he was good. He took the thing off. You know, sometimes as a kid, I still do it. I'll go to YouTube and look for the old cereal commercials. So they, I was wondering if some of those things were accurate. I was going to have to look at that later. Yeah, they're great. You know, but they're anyway, great. Yeah, so I ate all that stuff. But anyway, the movie oh, is just tiger. very funny, and it is. I liked it. Yeah. What was very funny, the joke that is, is, is a lot of people might not get for a moment, is that uh, what's his name from uh, from um, uh, Mad Men, uh, the actor. Uh, uh, oh, John uh, Hamm. John Hamm, and then another guy who was on that show are in one scene together as the advertising representatives trying to work for uh, for uh, Kellogg's to do this, come up with a name and so on and so forth. And really, it was it was funny because the ad men were the guys who played ad men on Mad Men. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, it, it, the, sh the thing was just terrific and it was written by Seinfeld. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm, and I'm watch Sk uh, uh, Spike Fierstein, who wrote the Nazi uh, soup Nazi episode for Seinfeld. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, so <laughs> it really was. It's it's if you get a chance to watch it, if you get yeah, how I, many I get Netflix it, here? Yeah. How many get Netflix? Anybody? Can I try a quick? Oh, okay. Yeah. Try a quick joke that yeah. somebody sent me. Unfrosted is really good. Yeah. What? Yeah. What'd you say? Uh, you try a quick joke that here. somebody <laughs> sent me that I thought was pretty cute. Let's see if you. I'm gonna read it. So, uh, so I don't. Uh, lose oh, here rat. goes. He has no timing at all. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I'm not a comic. Right. Right. No, that's for damn sure. Yeah. A, a man <laughs> walks into his backyard one morning and finds a gorilla in the tree. He calls the gorilla removal service, and soon the service man arrives with a chihuahua, a stick, a pair of handcuffs, and a shotgun. The guy, the the, the gorilla removal guy, says, "Now listen carefully." Uh, um, to the homeowner. I'm going to climb the tree and poke the gorilla with a stick until he falls out of the tree. Uh, the chihuahua is trained to go right for his private parts and the gorilla instinctively will go and, and, and try to stop the gorilla, uh, the uh, chihuahua from biting down in his, in his groin. Already you're murdering that, this joke, but go right, ahead. And, right, and, and, then, and then you slap the handcuffs on. And and he said, and the, the gorilla removal guy says you got it. And the homeowner replies yes. But what's the shotgun for? And the and the gorilla removal guy says in case I fall out of the tree first. Right, <laughs> it takes a lot. Of love. That joke is about forty years old. Well, I just heard it, son of a gun. And it's not that funny. Oh, Very good, on. Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, you guys heard it, you know, back in the 40s, so I wasn't around then. Yeah. Hello to Kevin. Hi, where are you, Kevin? Uh, just around town, finishing up my shift. Oh, your shift? Oh, you're pizza. doing, uh, you're oh, doing... the Uber Eats. Huh? No, not Uber Eats. He doesn't do Uber Eats. He oh, does. that was an Uber. Okay. What, what is it? That, what's the company you work for there? Oh, DoorDash. What? Jordan. 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 Oh, get this tonight or what? 
<laughs> Remember when Jordash were jeans? Yeah, my yeah. sister. Oh, Door Dash. Door Dash. Yeah, I checked that. Yeah. Now you Door Dash. You know. Yeah. I thought DoorDash it's, was Uliva. It's funny. Uh, his daughter started doing DoorDash, and when she left, I guess you took over her route, right? Uh, no, I just started my own and started doing it because uh, she was gone. And I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it gives you something to do, right? Exactly. I mean, you're not so broke; you need the money desperately. Uh, it gives me, you know. Yeah. It does have my daughter and your money. Yeah, it's, you, it's not, it's not high dollar stuff. Right. How are you doing on tips today? Oh, I did have a great day today. Did you, you had a great day today? Oh yeah, my first delivery today was a forty six dollar tip, man. Wow. That's oh, why forty six dollar tip? I wouldn't even give you a forty six dollar <laughs> tip. <laughs> what was the meal? Uh, it was a Mexican meal. I guess some guy bought a bunch of food for his employees and was up in the kind of oh, the back hills. Oh, okay, so so there was a lot of it. Yeah, it was a oh, lot of food. Okay, so I yeah, that's, a, that's right. Yeah, whatever the, uh, yeah. you know, 20 It paid me like uh, 60 bucks altogether, like 56 bucks, I think. Mm -hmm. And he paid you 40-something on that? Tip. 40, 46 dollars. Wow, yeah. that, that's am he's amazingly generous. Uh, yeah, I'd like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'd like that a lot. Started off the day well, <clears throat> and I made 100 bucks by the time I got to and a half hour in and I took a break and now I'm on my second and I'm bucks right now so it's a good thing so we can barely hear you because you're kind of breaking up a little bit mm -hmm. well probably because my navigation is telling me where to go so yeah yeah but uh my second shift here is almost 700 bucks too so I'm almost done wow so when do you right. go when do you go home what do I do when I go home? No, when do you go home? I know what you do when you go home. But... <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, 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 I'll go home. I'll just go home and uh, I'll go home in a fifteen minutes. 10 oh, minutes. okay. All right. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin, I would be tempted, Alex. Like when I would be picked, because I love fast food as a kid. I'd be tempted when you pick up the food, say from McDonald's. You, I'd want to get something. It's like, well, God, I'm just smelling those French fries. I have to get <laughs> yeah. I that's go that's why I put it all the way in the back. Pony, oh, I just be way. reaching in the back. I gotta get one. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I used to deliver food years ago. Yeah, years ago, uh, for Chinese for Chinese place, Whoa. Chinese Food mm -hmm. Express. My week. That's the worst. And man. after, it's so after oh. working for them for a week, my car hey. reeked of Chinese food. Oh, I love the smell of Chinese food, Alex. I oh. couldn't imagine. You wouldn't love it if your driving. car was infected with it. <laughs> no, you got to spray oh. it. In you. I be like, oh, I just love Chinese food. That's but, one of my but favorite. But as for the smell you of McDonald's, drive, Tony? no, I don't drive. I could, I, I do drive. I just, I haven't driven in a while. But I can walk up and get Chinese whenever I want. Well, you, you know how? What is? What is he? He's doing something here. He's he, getting the food. To oh, deliver oh, he's going to go. Are you going to get out and deliver it? Oh, he's walking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see if they give him a tip. Oh, he's free, frozen now. A good, yeah, I, that's I a good he, photograph of him right there. Yeah. yeah. Probably got out of range of his Wi Fi or whatever. Yeah. But he anyway. He probably got a gun on. Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> neighborhood he's in, and everybody gives him a big. Huh? Are you delivering it now? I don't know. Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Kevin? I don't think he can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but whatever. So, um, sorry about that. Oh, did you just deliver it? Yeah, I just delivered some. Uh, how much of a tip? Dose. Okay, let's try and guess how much was the total bill. First of all, I don't. I don't see the total bill. I just see what I get paid and what I got to tip. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So what did you get paid to begin with? Uh, a total of $5.25, and I traveled about three-quarters of a mile, plus a $2 tip. Plus a $2 oh. tip. You're $2. not really making much of it. Seven twenty-five for about three-quarters of a mile. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, that's not bad, I guess. All right, but you got the 
Do you do deliveries only in the city? Take some food out of that bag. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, I just hang around down here. Unless I go to Monterey or somewhere. Write the address down because now you know the low tip is. <laughs> oh, I do that all the time. <laughs> I used to do that when I had a paper out. Uh, this house never gives anything. Yep. So you, you drop the, so you drop the, uh, the newspaper on the front yard. Oh, when they didn't give me, oh, when they didn't yeah. pay, I used to have to call my bo boss up Siegel. And he used to be like, they're not, give, they're not paying the, the money. You got to collect it. He says, I couldn't go there anymore. He says, stop delivering papers. Okay. He says, well, smoke my little book. Wow. Yeah. Cause we, had a, we had a newspaper that was voluntary pay. You didn't have to pay. And these oh, people were really? No, I had the daily news. You had to, they had to pay. Yeah, I had one time, San Mateo Times, you had to pay, but the Advanced Star and Burlingame, you did not have to pay. It was voluntary $2 a month, and they'd still bitch. I'm not really? paying for that thing. Well, things have changed since I was a boy. I used to deliver occasionally. I, was a, uh, for, I would take over a route for people when they took time off for the Independent yep. Journal in Marin County. Uh -huh. And uh, I'd have to fold the papers. Oh, right? yeah, I remember Sunday with the bitch. You do it in that yep, kind of... Yep, they dump up on the corner. Fold them real good with my little Well, you do the... You, I we used like to do... Did you do the uh, the uh, triangular version of the fold of the newspaper? I think I rolled it, and I had a tight spin on it. Yeah, well, you could you could roll them, and then you had to buy the rubber bands from the... Yeah, I had the rubber journal. bands. I used to put them on real tight so I could yeah, fling them. But, I used, but I used to know how to make these things kind of like into a triangle. Mm -hmm. Oh, I couldn't and do that. And then you could just I take one yeah. end of it and throw it on the oh. people's uh, oh, doorstep. Wow. Like a boomerang. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if they were small enough, you could do it. If they were thin enough. Yeah. But, you know. One, one paper I could do that. They, the Chronicle, you couldn't do that. Why couldn't you do it? Okay. Like it was, it's too thick, especially yeah. on Sunday. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, you couldn't, do it. You couldn't do it with the New York Times yeah. here either. Here in the no. New York Times, they uh, during the winter... They put it in a plastic bag. Yeah, and during the, the bag summer, they just put a rubber band around it. You know, well here yeah. they actually just lay them flat out, okay, and mm -hmm. then you go through them and find yours. Yeah, and make sure that you get it before somebody steals it. Yeah, my mother used to get free papers. They, the, if I didn't give them the coupons on Sunday, it wasn't up to me. Sometimes they didn't stuff them in there. Sometimes I forgot. They would yell at me like, "I didn't get my coupons." I said, "Hold on, I'll come back. I got them back." Yeah. To you. Remember complaints? Down. Send out, <laughs> they used to send out complaints. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Really? Okay. Well, anyway, it looks like I, I'm going to play the theme in any moment now. Well, here. There we go. There's the theme. Okay. Uh, good to have you all here. It's been a nice little hour. Quiet. Mm -hmm. You don't have a lot of people watching right now, but, you know, who cares? I don't care. I don't care. Nobody wants to hear a guy who used to be a big radio star. Then fuck him. You know? That should oh. be the motto. That should be the motto. <laughs> no, I, so I guess I'm not. What did you say, Brian? I worked to keep it. <laughs> uh, Kevin, rather. Kevin? No. So I thought I was on. <laughs> yeah. to go oh, do it. Yeah, well, we love you, Kevin. And thank you for calling on your food route. Yep. Yeah. We got one more delivery. And, and, and put, putting some teenager out of work. You know, it's really, <laughs> yeah. Yep. You, yeah, yeah, you job. Work that yeah, Jeff, thank you for calling mm -hmm. tonight. Nice of you to join in our conversation. Tonight's been thank car you. talk. Uh, Alan, <laughs> thank you. And thank you to uh, Charlie for joining us. And of course, the lovely and attractive Tony. Everybody, <laughs> give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. We'll have another one on Monday uh, over, uh, let's see here, on, uh, on uh, uh, Facebook. Um, that's our Monday pop-up show, and then we'll be back here again. Same time, same station in life. Right here. Right here. Uh, at the... Uh, 10.30 Eastern Time with a, an edition of The Ramble. We'll see you again, uh, as I say, on Monday. And stay tuned for Amy Manuel, who is next with The Intersection. Have a nice night, everybody, and have a good weekend as well. That would be nice. Bye.